Hello everybody, this is City Scrapper. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. Today I have a layout for you that I have made using the sketch for day number nine of Christie's Beautiful Life, 30 Days of Sketches, Series 7. For this sketch, I'm using the Vicki Booten Kaleidoscope Collection. This isn't the first time I'm using this collection, so when I looked into the little bag that I keep all of the items for this collection in, I saw that I had a lot of papers that were already cut into, and I also had fussy cut a lot of embellishments, I guess you could say, out of the papers in the collection. So I wanted to use some of those items in this layout. Here I'm inking the edges of some of the papers that are going to go on the page, and I'm using the ink pad itself. I like to use the ink pad when I want the edges to be very dark, but I will caution you that you have to be careful that you don't get the ink on your photos or anything else. I think the wisest thing to do if you're going to do this would be to ink things and then put them aside to dry for a good amount of time. But of course I didn't do that and I did get some ink on my pictures, but I did end up getting it all off. So now I'm popping up my photos on some adhesive foam. You can see there that I attached the two photos together and then as one unit I put the foam on the back of it. And you can see from the sketch that I have flipped it around a little bit. My daughter was looking to the left in these pictures, and so I put the pictures on the right side of the layout and in the sketch there on the left side, but it really wasn't a big deal. So now I'm cutting out some butterflies. There's a whole pattern paper sheet, or actually two pattern paper sheets, of these butterflies in the pad. And I thought these were great to use with a very colorful page. I always feel like it's nice to have some black and white elements mixed in when there's a lot of color. I cut out this little sentiment that says escape the ordinary. And the little hand there says making stuff happen. So I fussy cut that out as well. Now I'm just popping up this camera on some foam as well and attaching down some of the elements to that black and white strip. So here I am cutting out even more butterflies. And I like the way there are different size butterflies on the page. So there's some small, medium, and large. Right now I just have the medium and the small butterflies on the page. And I do add one of the larger butterflies, but that's a little bit later on in the layout. Now I'm adding a small strip, about a quarter of an inch, of this beautiful rainbow paper that comes in this collection. And again, I'm inking the edges on these as well. I also found that scallop that I had previously punched out for some other project and then I didn't use it, so I thought this might look nice underneath the black and white striped paper that's already on the layout. So I'm inking the edges of that as well. And I'm gonna be adding a strip of this rainbow paper on the top and on the bottom. And I just like the way that kind of makes the layout look framed when there's something along the sides or along the top and the bottom. I also go around and I ink all of those butterflies. I don't show the whole thing because it's repetitive, but you can see I'm just inking the edges of all the butterflies and also of those hearts. And then I take that sentiment that says escape the ordinary and I ink the edges of that as well. Then I changed my mind and I decided I did not want to use that pattern paper background. I wanted to make a mixed media background. And it's a little out of focus here. It only lasts for a really short time. Sorry about that. So now I'm taking a piece of 120 pound smooth white cardstock, which is pretty much the only thing I've been using lately for mixed media, and I'm adding some sprays to the background. I've already coated it with some white gesso. White gesso is my personal favorite. I only use clear when I'm putting mixed media on pattern paper. This is one of the Prima Color Bloom 2 sprays. I think this is Black Tulip, and I really love those sprays. I've been using them a lot lately. This particular spray is a Delusion spray and it's a citron color. 
and I thought that these colors were all perfect to match in with the Kaleidoscope collection and also with the colors that I chose, guys, I kind of pulled out of the collection to use on my layout. I'm also using this Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. This is a turquoise color. And I'm just spreading that around using the packaging technique. Since I know where the outline of the embellishment and photos are is going to be, I know uh, where to put the sprays. I don't really like that I got that color, that blue color going all the way down to the bottom. So I sopped up whatever I could. I find that sometimes it comes right off and other times it doesn't. So that's okay. I go back in later with some gesso and cover that up. I'm also using a color bloom spray in, I think it's called poppy seed, that red color. And I really like the way all those colors look together. I do try to put two layers of each spray down when I make a watercolor background. I like the way the building up of the layers makes the colors look. It just makes them look more in depth and more interesting, and especially for the lighter colors. So for this green color, I want to make sure that there's a couple of layers and that the color is vivid enough. Those dilution sprays are pretty vivid though, I have to say. And now I'm going back in and I'm splattering on each of the areas of color with the same color splatters. And I haven't been splattering as much lately, I find. I love splatters. I think it's so funny that, you know, we smoosh down color with plastic and then we go back in and we splatter more random paint over it. But I do like the way that that looks. And I really like that pattern paper that I had in the background. I feel like that was a perfectly fine choice, but I was just feeling like I wanted some mixed media on that page. So it's kind of whatever you are feeling and what you like to do. I was just in the mood to add a mixed media background to these photos. I add some more of the citron color, and now I'm going back in with some splatters of water and you may be familiar with this. If you splatter water and then you use a paper towel to sop up the water, it pulls up some of the color and it makes a really cool pattern on the background. Sometimes it takes up most of the color. Sometimes it takes up almost all of the color. Sometimes it just makes a slight difference in the texture, but I just love doing this and I really love the result. So I do go around many times with the water and keep lifting up some of the paint. Now I'm going back in with some, I think I'm using some white acrylic paint. I didn't end up liking the white acrylic paint. It was fine, but I ended up going back in with some gesso because I feel like I already have gesso down, so you can't really see the difference. Whereas the white acrylic paint, even though it's very subtle, you can kind of see when you look at it that it's different from the gesso. And you really just need to put a couple of coats down and it could pretty much cover up almost anything. Now I'm using some of my watered down black acrylic paint that I keep prepared and handy because I do like to put down splatters. And I'm just putting a few little splatters down around the outside of the page because there's black accents. I wanted to make sure that there was some black in the background and it doesn't take a lot just a few little splatters. Well, actually a few little splatters. I just, <laughs> I just put down a lot of splatters, but I do find that a very small percentage of the splatters that I put down end up showing on the layout. So here's where I go back in with the white gesso. I wanted to cover up that area on the bottom. I told you that I didn't like where it was blue. And then I also went back in and I covered up some of the other areas where some of the color had kind of wandered away from the main area. It's still going to be messy, but it's kind of my way of making it a neater messy. And now I am going back in with a stencil. This is a Tim Holtz stencil. I think it's called something like Dot Fade. It's one of my favorite stencils. And I'm using modeling paste and some white stencil paint. And I mix those together and just going around the areas of color and covering those with these dots. And I feel like it kind of tones down the color a little bit. And at the same time, it adds another kind of interesting element to the background. 
So here's where I kind of get myself into trouble. So I really want to add some stamping to the background. And so I pulled out this set of bow bunny stamps. I really like this circle. The mistake that I made here was I made those circles outside of the areas of color. I should have overlapped the, all the circles onto the color instead of bringing them out into the white area. And I absolutely dislike everything that I just did. So now I am going to cover everything back up. I was a little worried, but luckily everything works out just fine in the end. I went back in there and I put numerous coats of gesso on there and I just dried the gesso between each coat and you really can't see my mistakes there. But I'm not going to give up. I'm going to go back in with the stamps and I'm going to try it again. So I am using, by the way, some stays on ink and black. And now I am going to be a little more careful about where I put the circles. I want to make sure that I put them on the colors or mostly on the colors. And sometimes it's a little hard to stamp when you have already put texture paste down, but this is just a rough stamp. I don't care if the circles come out perfectly. I actually don't want them to come out perfectly. I just want parts of the circle to show. So I like that much, much better. And I realized when I put the photo cluster back on top that that area needed a little bit of color. So I just add a little bit of the turquoise ink in the corner and I'm just going back in and adding even more gesso, just so you can't see those inked circles that I put in the wrong spot, but it does, it covers up perfectly. It can't be seen. And now I'm just going back in and I'm sticking to more circles, but within the areas of color, and I do like that. And I try to make the circles all a little bit different. There are some that are full circles and some that are half circles. On some, I press down the right-hand side, some on the left-hand side, and in that way, each one I'm hoping will look a little bit different. So now I'm going back in with even more black splatters, mainly trying to put them along the edge to kind of transition between the background and the areas of color. And then I had the idea that I wanted to put a little bit more texture since it's white, it won't be super noticeable, but I thought that this would help kind of cover up anything that was going on in the background that I wasn't crazy about. So I went back in and added some more of the texture paste or the modeling paste and the white stencil paste mixed together. And you'll see in a minute, I think it turned out just fine. <laughs> Much better than when I put those big black splotches on the background. So now I'm attaching my photo cluster down to the page. And now that the black ink on those rainbow strips is dry, I'm attaching those down. And now I'm adding my title, which is going to be colorful. And that bird was cut, fussy cut out from the papers. And I'm just putting all of those butterflies back in place. And that sentiment didn't end up making it onto the page. Instead, I pulled out these little phrase strips that say, live for the moments you can't put into words. And I have those below the picture, but then I end up moving them around. Now I'm popping up the title on some adhesive foam and putting that up on the top with a heart. And that butterfly, I thought since all the butterflies are black and white, it would be a good idea to put the colorful one on the title that says colorful. So just putting everything back into place and attaching the bird over the photo and the butterflies, again, trying to sprinkle them around the page so they look balanced. Then I decided that the title looked a little squished up there in that corner. I felt it was a little bit more room on the bottom left-hand corner, so I moved the title down there. And this is where I add one of the larger butterflies. And I move this around a little bit. I end up putting it underneath the picture that's all the way to the right because I wanted to leave some room on that card right there 
to the uh, left of the photos for journaling. So I ended up putting it under the photo there. And I was attaching down these phrases and then I decided I wanted to put them up on top over the bird. And now I'm using this little plastic stencil. I really don't know where I got that from, but that's perfect for drawing lines for journaling. And I noticed that that one little strip was a little short. So instead of trying to peel it up and move it over, I just thought it'd be easiest to just add a little bit of green. I did add some photo corners and I added that piece of plastic right there, epoxy over the lens of the camera. And that completes this layout, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out all the other scrapbookers that are following along with this challenge. I hope you'll like and subscribe. Thanks to all of my current subscribers. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow.